Thank you for joining us. This is the cruise. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for uh, allowing us to come into your presence at this moment. We are looking up to you that, Lord, you will release the, the children's bread, that nobody will go hungry who has come to listen to you. Open our eyes, so our eyes may behold wondrous things. Feed us. Because you say, man shall not live alone by bread, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. So feed us. And let your grace be sufficient for our needs. In Jesus' name we pray. It. Amen. Thank you again for joining us. We keep pressing on little by little. We get today to the book of Genesis chapter 33. That's where we stopped off last time. Genesis 33. We're walking through Genesis little by little. And then we want to walk through the entire Bible. We know it's not going to be very easy the way we are going. Uh, but what I wanted us to have is an overview, a best eye view of the entire entire Bible. Um, but we say let's start with Genesis, because Genesis is the book of beginnings and the beginning of everything. So it's a miniature. Let me stress again. In discipleship, the test book is the Bible for spiritual discipleship. There are very many, many other books that are very good, and I recommend them to you. There are several good authors uh, that their books will help your heart. Not every author will help you. So there are several books that God has provided for us, which will make good reading, which will also help us. But the Bible is our text book. But we say this book of the law, this book, this book of the law is not like any other book. Every other book may improve your, your brain, but this one seeks to profit your heart. And this is a treasure field. You can never finish digging it all your life. It will cost you all. But once you begin to enter into the scriptures and know how to receive the word of God from it, your day is made. I will encourage you. Let me say it again. This is not for decoration. This is not for the shelf. Thank God that many people paid a price to get this across to us. Tyndale and several of those early saints. Tyndale died for, so, that, so that the Bible may be given to us in English. There are several other men that paid for the Bible to come in different languages. Today we have uh, the Bible in, se in several native languages in Nigeria. There's an uh, a Yoruba Bible, there's an Aosa Bible, there's an Igbo Bible, there is a tea Bible, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. People paid for this. Don't take it as a joke. It is God that is saying, I want my people to read my word, because my word is my bond. He has exalted this above his very name, and not one jot of it will fail. It's like God himself is eternal, is everlasting. It is unchanging from generation to generation. And the scriptures cannot be broken. It contains history. It contains the principles and ways of God. It contains the mind of God. It contains the wisdom of God. And once you hook into this, you become a special person upon the face of the earth. And nobody must tell you about the will your father wrote. When a man, and every man has a will that when he's no longer there, that will comes into operation. I need to know the, 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 the terms and what is written in the will. When Jesus died, God's will for the New Testament believer came into being. And it's not good for somebody else to tell you what your father has decided for you. So, please, I believe that God is achieving his purpose of making us to be interested and desire the word of God, the Bible, the written word of God. And if you hook up to it and it becomes your daily, daily, daily desire to search it. Obviously, the Berean Christians, they were more noble than those in Thessalonica because they searched the scriptures. 
to find out whether what they were told by Paul was true. Laziness is a bane. We must be searchers. When you search the scriptures, too many good things happen to you. When you dig the Bible, you dig your own heart and evacuate from your heart every rubbish. So that the Bible, will, the Word of God will find space. The Bible says we must be richly indwelled. Anybody who wants to be a disciple of Christ, who does not form a habit of digging the, the Word of God, studying it, meditating upon it, receiving it and, 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 and practicing it is not doing well. You will be a loser. Don't let anybody else tell you what your father said concerning you. It's your personal, private responsibility. First, God has given us teachers, but they cannot, they cannot be a replacement for your own efforts to receive the word of God for your life. So as I go on, we have seen several characteristics, several characters. We have seen several, several, several things from Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, up to now. And God has blessed us, or blessed me, even as I shared with you, tremendously. My life is being transformed, even as I share the Bible. I make it a point of duty to read my Bible, to study my Bible, to have my quiet time every day on the Word of God. I want to see God's face. I don't want to be a stranger to the throne of grace. I know the source of my life and the success of my life depends on this. And so I don't take it for granted. It is, it, it is, I esteem this better than my necessary food. My tour, my rice, my beans cannot be as important as this. Rice, beans, tour, uh, salad, they are all food for the body. When you eat good food, your body is nourished, your body looks fresh. When you don't when you don't eat good food, your body will show. Also, when you don't read the Bible and receive from the Bible, your spirit will show. If you are reading the Bible and you are receiving the word of God and practicing it, your spirit will show. So, please, again, again, don't allow the devil to cheat you and fill your time with, take all your time with useless endeavors. Don't spend all your day on the WhatsApp and the Instagram and the Facebook and have little time for the word of God. No, it's not good. It's not complimentary. That means you don't, you don't love God. That means you are taking God for granted. Now, we have come to the point where Jacob has left the house of Laban, his uncle, his uncle with four wives, many children, much cattle, many, many servants, and he was now going back. We have come to the critical point of Penia. And we have seen the other day the encounter with Esau. Esau had promised that he would kill Jacob. But as it turned out, as we saw, after Penia and after the sun rose again, God took charge. And the man that wanted to kill him became his best friend. They were twins. And after he had passed Esau's challenge, it was now approaching back into the promised land, the land that God gave to the Jews upon which they live up to today. I'd like to finish that. I'd like just to take the last part of chapter, chapter 33 uh, so that we can hook on. Uh, Genesis chapter 33, sorry. I was in Exodus. Genesis 33, verse 16. So after Esau had dialogued with Jacob, and Jacob had told him to go, that they shouldn't go together, because Esau offered to lead him on. I will leave all that. There are many lessons to learn from that, but I will leave you to go and learn those lessons. Verse 16 says, So Esau returned that day on his way unto Seir. Seir was Esau's place, as Canaan was the place for the Israelites. God is the one that divides the earth unto, his, unto every, every nation. He gave Mount Seir to the Edomites. The Edomites are the, are the people of, of, of the children of Esau, Jacob's twin brother. He returned to Seir. And Jacob journeyed to Sukkot and built him an house and made boots for his cattle. Therefore, the name of that place is called Sukkot. Jacob came to Shalem. 
a city in, of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan. He has arrived now in the land of Canaan. When he came from Padan Aram and pitched his tent before the city, and he bought a parcel of field where he had where he had spread his tent at the end of the channel of Amo, Chicken Spada, for an hundred pieces of money, and erected an altar and called it El Elohe Israel. El Elohe Israel. God, the God of Israel. Hallelujah. I hope you are following the story. Jacob was now back to the land of promise, Canaan land. Huh? After he left his uncle, he came to Shalem, the city of Shechem, huh? and pitched his tent before the city, and he bought a parcel of field, hmm? which is spread out. I don't want to be, I don't want to say, speak about this, but God has promised this land to the children of Abraham. Huh? They didn't need to pay for it because they will possess it eventually. Every inch of it. Abraham bought in that place a burying place when his wife died. Now I see uh, and Jacob buying a place from the son, from the general of Hamor, Shechem's father, and he paid the money. And he erected an altar and called it El Elohe Israel. This is the first altar I see him erecting. Since he left better years back, he erected an altar. And we have spoken so much about altars. All the great men, all the great women, they were people that erected altars. They built altars. The altar is a place where a man can meet with God. I think this altar he built here to the God of Israel was to thank him for this journey message, to thank him for the deliverances, to thank him for these several years, about 21 years, that we are almost wasted. He built an altar. If you don't build an altar, there's no connection between you and God. You can't, there's no place to meet with God. There's no place for communion. There's no place to lay down your life. There's no place to eat with God. And if a man does not eat with God, he becomes a stranger. When you are not eating with a man, you are still a stranger to that person. You still suspect each other. And God does not want us to be strangers. So this is where he pitched his tent in Canaan land, but not inside Canaan. I wish he had gone inside before he pitched his tent. If he had been hearing God, it's not good to always live on the periphery, on the tangential, on the outskirts. It's never good. Move in, my friend, into the very center of the purpose and will of God for your life. This place was going to cause trouble. So let us cross over verse 34, chapter 34, and see what trouble came. And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to the daughters of the land. <coughs> And when Shechem, the, the son of Amor, the Hevite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and spake kindly unto the damsel. And Shechem spake unto her, his father Hamor, saying, Get me this damsel to wife. Jacob had that, it, that, that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they were come. This chapter of, this, of Genesis is looking interesting, and it is how we relate with our neighbors, how we relate with people who are not of the same faith with us, who live in our vicinity. Eh? How we must separate from them. We must not intermarry with them. We must not worship their gods. We must remain distinct because we are God's people. The Bible says, and Dinah, when they had come and pitched in that place, the land of Shechem, Dinah, daughter of Leah, which she bore unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. Dinah was the only daughter that Jacob had. He had 11, 12 sons, and the last born was still to be born, be born a few years from now, uh, when Rachel, his mother, will finish, will die. But at this point, there were 11 sons and one daughter, a princess, a lady that could have become a woman of note. In fact, the father would have given, him, given her an inheritance with the brothers. But look how this life became wasted. This is the last time you're going to hear about Dinah in the Bible. 
What happened to Dinah, the daughter of Leah, eh, that she bore for Jacob? The Bible says she went out to see the daughters of the land. I'd like you to take note of that word. She went out. She didn't stay within the boundaries where she must stay. She went out to go and see the, the daughters of the land. Eh, maybe she was feeling lonely, but she had a mother. She had brothers. But she went out. <clears throat> she went out. My dear young lady, are you going out? Where are you going to? Are you crossing boundaries? Are you going out from the place of refuge? Are you going out from the place where God has earmarked for your life? Are you going away from cover? She went out. She didn't tell her brothers. She didn't tell her father. She didn't tell her mother. She went out. Young lady, some of you think that you are being over controlled. When your father says, before you go anywhere, let me know. Your other brother said, no, 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 you can't be around. I can't be around and you just go and come whenever you like. This house, after 7 o'clock, all of you must be inside. You think that is restraining you too much. You think that is old-fashioned. You want to be free like air. She went out. Oh my God, she went out. To see, the, to see the, the way they are putting it. I see there is something there to see. I see there is something there that you are missing. Eh? When I see our young ladies who want to be like the hidden girls, I want to look like the hidden girls. There's, there, I see to say there is something they are missing by being Christian girls. I just say there is something they are missing by, by, by following the, their, their parents in their, in their, in their, in their religion. They want to go to their seamstresses. They want to go to their hairdressers. They want to go out. Eh? Out of cover. They, they think that those ones there, there's something they're enjoying there that we don't enjoy here. That's the devil. Peer pressure. It has ruined a lot of girls who could have become mothers in Israel. Eh? They want to taste something. You cannot be as wise as these daughters of Shechem. What they will do and escape. If you do it, you will never escape. Daughter of Zion. She went out to see. And when Shechem, the son of Hamor, the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defied her. He raped her. He violated her. He disbarged her. He defiled her. She's no longer pure. We can't talk about this because it brings a frightening in our generation. When you talk about virginity, no, we can't talk about it. And I would like to emphasize that spiritual virginity is even much, much more sacrosanct. Eh? But I wish every lady would give her husband the pride, the, 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 the opportunity to be the one to disbarge her. But you see, when I see even on the television nowadays, they say, I don't know what they are doing. They say, people are, people are, people are sleeping and having sex in front of camera. And I keep wondering, I keep wondering. I say, what kind of generation is this? No more shame. When I was a young man, you don't, you don't talk about it in the family. There's, it's not a matter of born again. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of the family. They, you don't talk about it. Among the Old Testament Jews, you don't discuss it. You marry as a virgin. Eh? The Bible said this, 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 this lady was, was violated. She was defied. She was raped. I don't know whether it is rape. Because to rape somebody is not simple. To rape somebody is not simple. When I hear, when I hear about, about rape, rape, rape everywhere, I will keep wondering, is it so simple to rape somebody? Is it so simple to rape somebody? Eh? The Bible says before they rape you, you must show the evidence of rape. You don't rape a person inside the city. If it's at the city, then it means you are quiet, you are greed. Eh? If it's at a room in the city, what noise did you make? What window did you break? What did you shatter? What effort did you make to, to resist it? If it's in, inside the wilderness, between two towns, inside the push, you can say, well, I was overpowered, but not in the town. 
And we better teach our daughters not to go out from cover, not to go out from protection, not to go out from the brethren to a place where they can be raped by wicked people. This man raped this girl, violated her, and trouble came. This girl lost everything. She lost her virginity, she lost her place in the family, she lost her pride. She's no longer a princess. And the Bible said, the soul of this, his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. He loved the damsel and spoke kindly unto the damsel. And he spoke unto his father, Hamo, saying, Get this, me this damsel to wife. Ah, brother, something has happened in verse 3. I don't understand it. He so clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob. And he loved the damsel. This is not this is a strange statement for me. Why is it strange? When men have defiled a girl, when men have left with a girl, they have got what they want. They don't they, in fact what happens naturally is that they hate that girl. They say, Go away from here. When Amon, Amnon defiled uh, Tamar, the sister of Absalom, he hated her. The, the, the much he loved her. That kind of love that turns to hatred once you get what you want. It's a very wicked kind of love. My dear little sister, what a boy wants from you as he's giving you money, as he's doing many things for you, is just your body. Once he has it, he has taken it and he loses interest, but he has something has happened. He said he loved her and he wanted to marry her. Eh? And he spoke kindly with her. And he told his father, please sir, can you go and get this girl for me? And they came and told, and Jacob heard that they had defiled her, his daughter. Now his sons were with the cattle, they had gone to graze the cattle. And Jacob held his peace as an elder. He was not going to allow his emotions to, to, to flow out. He just held his peace when he heard what happened. Then I had not even returned yet. And he held his peace. He knows his daughter has a blame, part of the blame. Maybe they warn her. The way you are looking outside. Everything you need in life is within this confine. Read your Bible. Do your prayers. Follow your mommy where she's cooking. Learn from her. Eh? There's nothing you are looking for outside with the daughters of, of, of the land. They are not your kind. Light and darkness have nothing to do together. But what I want to say to you as I close this day is that this incident is typical of many, many people in the world who have wasted their lives. If Dana was not defied here, what should have become, what should have become in, the, in, in Israel up to tomorrow would have been fantastic. But there's no more Dinah. There's no record after this event. That's the end of Dinah. But friend, I want to just comment on what that man told his father. Get me this damsel to wife. Just to tell that the way to marry is not to go, and, to go and sleep with a girl first. Before you start talking to your father, say, get me this girl. That's not the way to marriage. That's not the way to proper marriage. To go and defile a girl, to go and violate a girl, to go and pregnant a girl. Then you're asking the, the, your father, let's go and marry this girl for me. No, that is putting the cat before the horse. When you want to marry a girl, and God is leading you to her, and God has shown that this is the person that is going to spend your life with you and help you. And God is giving you permission to marry her. And then you tell your father that there is a girl I saw. That God is leading me to her. Please daddy, check with me. And it may not be your physical father. It may be your spiritual father. Daddy, please check it with me. Is God also confirming it in your heart that this is the girl I will marry? That's the process. When your father says, okay, 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 okay. I think I'm, 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 uh, it's, it's confirmed in my heart. Let's pray more and see whether it is God. Because if you don't marry the one that God has ordained for your life, you are going to have trouble. And marriage is such a critical matter that once you enter into it and sign, there is no other thing to do. You, 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 don't, you, don't, you don't annul it. Until death do you part. Until that lady dies or you die, that marriage stands. What, the only thing that can, can, that can separate two of you is death. And so you must follow the process. I see a lot of careless young men and women nowadays who are doing what they should not do be, what they should not do yet. 
Don't awaken love before time. Don't get emotionally attached to a woman and start sleeping with her when you have not gone through the process. The way to marry is not to sleep with a woman first and then you start asking your father to get her for you. No. And when, you, when your father says yes, go and propose to her. Let her pray and give you consent. Then you go through a period of courtship before the wedding and then you marry her properly. You, pay, you, 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 you have a family feast together. You go to church before witnesses. They join you together. Eh? Eh? Don't jeopardize your life. Diana has finished. This whole village was going to finish very soon. As far as the sons of Jacob are concerned, they have done what they should not do. Again, we are learning lessons. You see, that's why the Bible is important. God is speaking to you all the time. All the time. If you are making a mistake, you can retrace your step now. That relationship is not of God. The relationship that starts with sex is not of God. Eh? I know that you will not like this kind of message because it is no longer, it's old-fashioned. But God is not, his, God is, God is not old-fashioned. His word is forever settled by your head. Repent. Turn back to him. Young lady, stop going out like Dinah. Stop going beyond boundaries. Stop making an experiment with your life. Young man, no matter how hot your body is, exercise self-control. Wait for the day. But I know that several people are, are coming under conviction now. And I just trust you that you are going to gather this poor. You are going to gather these ones as they repent, as they turn to you in tears. The broken hearts. See, a broken and a contrite heart you will not despise. Lord, you can give a second chance, a third chance, a fourth chance. That one there who has, has, has no self-control at all and is falling and falling and falling, Lord, you can catch that lady and make her to stand. Father, we are just praying that, Lord, your word will bring light and that darkness will flee away. That our generation after us will not be lost like Dana was lost. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Reshes Media Center, number one, Refuge Close, on Gwambarde, Sabon Tasha Kaduna. Telephone numbers 0814-408-9412, 0805-845-5719. Email address threshesteam at yahoo.com or you could visit our website at www.threshesteam.com. .org.ng